The Wild Robot by Peter Brown, chapters 56 to 58. Chapter 56, The New Lodges. The second lodge would have to be bigger than the first if it was going to fit Broadfoot, the bull moose. He was a towering hulk of an animal and had a thick coat of fur, but even he was struggling with the frigid temperatures. Broadfoot lived on the other side of the pond, in a dense section of forest that was home to many animals, most of whom were in desperate need of a good thaw. The winter days were short, so there was no time to waste, and rather than walking all the way around the pond, Roz tested its frozen surface to see if it was safe to cross. She threw a heavy rock high in the air and watched it bounce off the hard ice. Then she carefully walked over the ice and into the forest on the other side, where she found Broadfoot waiting for her. The moose quietly led the robot to the clearing in the trees where the new lodge would go. Then Roz made a fire and watched as cold creatures began crawling out from the shadows. Do not worry, the robot said to the growing crowd, steam puffing from their noses. You will all be warm soon, but I need your help. Roz asked the animals to collect anything useful they could find. Large stones, strong branches, chunks of frozen mud. With the robot's building expertise and the small army of helpers, construction of the second lodge didn't take long. The animals happily agreed to the robot's truce, and then they shuffled into the warm wooden dome. If you keep the fire alive, it will keep you alive, explained Roz as she dropped another log onto the flames. But be careful, fire can turn deadly in an instant. At dawn, heavy snow was falling again, and there was Roz setting out from the nest to build a third lodge. She trudged into the great meadow, where fierce winds had created enormous sweeping snowdrifts. But she powered through and finished the job and was soon beginning work on a fourth lodge, and then a fifth. The island became dotted with lodges that all glowed warmly through those long winter nights. And inside each one, animals laughed and shared stories and cheered their good friend Roz. Chapter 57, The Fire Strange sounds were echoing from the far side of the pond. What started as a low murmur gradually swelled to a chorus of terrified voices. There was an eerie glow in that part of the forest, and a thick plume of smoke began rising up from the snowy treetops. Roz charged across the ice and found the second lodge completely engulfed by a raging fire. Frightened animals were running in every direction, fleeing for their lives through the deep snow. What happened? shouted Roz as Broadfoot galloped wildly past. We put too many logs in the fire pit, he said without stopping. The flames climbed up to the ceiling. My baby is still in there, cried a mother hare, pointing at the burning lodge. Somebody help, please. Roz didn't hesitate. She plowed through the snow and ducked into the lodge. Flames and smoke were everywhere. A tall stack of logs blazed in the fire pit and in the far corner, a tiny ball of fur was shaking with fear. Crouching low, the robot wound her way beneath the smoke and around the flames and gently scooped up the young hare. Do not worry, Roz yelled over the roar of the fire. You are going to be okay. She turned to leave, but the doorway had started to crumble. So she shielded the hare with her body and smashed right through the walls of the lodge. Sizzling pieces of wood went flying as the robot and the hare burst outside into the soft snow. Oh, darling, you're all right, cried the mother hare, pulling her daughter close. Thank you for saving my baby, Roz. Now that everyone was safely away, the robot turned her attention to putting out the fire. Her glowing eyes darted around as she computed a plan. Then with all the strength in her legs, Roz launched herself high up into the snowy branches of the nearest pine tree. A moment later, the tree was shaking violently, and heaps of snow were sliding from its branches and pouring onto the flames like an avalanche. Steam hissed up through the smothering mound of snow. The flames quickly died, the snow quickly melted, and within minutes, all that remained was the charred foundation of the lodge. Roz dropped down from the tree and waited as the frightened animals slowly returned. Then she said to them, Would you like another lodge? The animals looked at one another, unsure of what to do. Understandably, they were afraid of another fire breaking out. But they were far more afraid of the deadly cold. So they pulled together and worked with Roz and built a bigger, better lodge on top of the old one. It had a taller ceiling and a deeper fire pit. It was made with more rock and less wood, and it had a supply of water for emergencies. 
but the most important safety features of this rebuilt lodge were the lodgers themselves, who now had a whole new respect for fire. Chapter 58, The Conversations Thanks to Ross's truce, life inside the nest was mostly harmonious. But when the animals went outside, it was business as usual. Sometimes a lodger wouldn't return. Sometimes a lodger would return in the belly of another lodger. As you can imagine, that made for some awkward moments. So when everyone was gathered around the fire, they tried to keep things pleasant by having conversations like these. I wonder what Brightville is doing right now. Chit Chat lay on her back and looked at the ceiling as she spoke. And where he is and who he's with and if he ever thinks about us back here on the island. I am sure he thinks about us, said Roz. I think about him all the time. I like to imagine that the geese had a fun flight into the wintering grounds and now Brightville is floating on a lovely lake, eating yummy food and making wonderful new friends, but hopefully they're not too wonderful because I'd like to stay his best friend if possible. That is a nice thought, said Roz, but I worry that the flock might have gotten caught in this icy weather. I do not think they would handle it well. Don't worry, I'm sure they're fine, said Chit Chat. Brightville is such a great flyer, I just know he'll keep the flock out of trouble. He is a great flyer, said Roz, but I still worry. Life is short. Dig down, the old groundhog was giving another one of her fireside speeches. I'll be lucky if I see the spring. I don't want your pity. I've had a good run. But I'll tell you what, if I could do it all over again, I'd spend more time helping others. All I've ever done is dig tunnels. Some of them were real beauties too, but they're all hidden underground, where they're no good to anyone but me. And they weren't even good to me this winter. Now, the beavers, they have it all figured out. They built that beautiful dam, which created a lovely pond that made all our lives better. That must feel mighty good. The beavers made our lives better in another way, said Fink. They taught Roz how to build. Ain't that the truth, said Digdown. Roz, you must have saved half the island with your lodges. And to think we used to call you a monster. I'll repay my debt to you if it's the last thing I do. Your friendship is payment enough, said Roz. Oh, please. Your sweetness is going to make me sick. There must be something we can do. Your friendship really is enough. Friends help each other, and I will need all the help I can get. My mind is strong, but my body will not last forever. I want to survive as long as possible, and to do that, I will need the help of my friends. The animals listened quietly to Roz and thought of their own struggles to survive. Life in the wilderness was hard for everyone. There was no escaping that fact. But the robot had made their lives a little easier, and if ever they could, the animals would return the favor. I've seen 93 winters, far more than any of you. Crag the turtle spoke slowly, but everyone always listened to his words. And I can tell you that the winters have gotten colder. And the summers have gotten hotter. And the storms have gotten fiercer. I heard that the ocean is higher, said Chit Chat. But I don't see how that could be true. I mean, where would all that extra water come from? You are right. The ocean is higher, said Crag. My grandfather used to say that long ago. This island was not an island at all. All. It was a mountain surrounded by flat lands. And then the ground shook, and the oceans grew, and the land slowly flooded until the mountain became this island. Animals from far and wide were forced to come here to escape the floodwaters. In those early days, there were too many animals living in too small a place. The island did not have enough food to feed them all. But between fighting and disease and famine, a balance was finally reached. And we have kept the balance ever since. 
Chit Chat's eyes grew wide with concern. If the ocean keeps rising, the island will be swallowed up by the waves and I don't even know how to swim. If the waves ever do swallow this island, it will not happen for a very long time, said Crag. By then we will all be long dead. Even me. Everything has a purpose. It was Swooper's turn to lecture the lodgers. The sun is meant to give light. Plants are meant to grow. We owls are meant to hunt. We mice are meant to hide. We raccoons are meant to scavenge. Ross, what are you meant to do? I do not believe I have a purpose. Ha! Huh. I respectfully disagree, said Swooper. Clearly, you are meant to build. I think Roz is meant to grow gardens. Roz is definitely meant to care for Brightbill. Perhaps I am simply meant to help others, 